Welcome everyone to the OC show. My name is Tim and I'm here with Roman and Peter from HW. Roman, you are also known as Der Bauer. And we are here in Germany because we are here for the Gamescom. Um, while we were coming to Germany, the first stop was at the EOC 2014, which is an event you organized. Maybe you can take the, like tell us a little bit more about that event. Oh, the Gigabyte EOC is a Gigabyte Extreme Overclocker, Overclocker competition. It was the third time we hosted it in Germany. Um, basically, every year in, uh, in summer, we're going to have a small competition with about five to six teams to test the latest hardware. This year we had the C97 L2 board, mm -hmm. um, had five teams from big forums in Germany, plus uh, one team from Switzerland, Christian A. And uh, we were testing, uh, like I said, the LN2 board, which was um, new to all participants, which is pretty pretty cool if you uh, couldn't touch the system before yeah. the competition itself. Makes it a lot more interesting. And yeah. Okay. Well, that's pretty good. It must be interesting to see um, guys actually competing on a board they've never seen before, never touched, yeah. never. And because that board has a special mounting, it also adds a challenge on top of that. Indeed, yeah, you, you can you have no mounting holes for a CPU container, yeah. so you need a very heavy CPU container, or if you use a light one, you have to be very careful not to, to move it during mm -hmm. the, the competition, because once you like crack the thermal paste, yeah, yeah, you have to remount everything. Okay, so there were five team, uh, six teams in total for that competition, so those teams were... Um, so you had a team from Award Fabric, from uh, PC Games Hardware, from Hardware Looks, um, you had Team Switzerland as well, and... Um, Free OC and had a team. Yeah. <laughs> and Hardware Reactor you loaded. Oh, oh yes, Reactor that's the, the one with the gigantic name, yeah. Um, <laughs> and actually they did pretty, pretty well for um, <clears throat> for not ever having touched the system before. Mm -hmm. um, they had a they had a single-sided MFR memory, so all the memory uh, performance benchmarks were kind of... The results were okay, but not uh, you couldn't compare them with the really efficient runs that we currently already see in the rankings. Yeah. Um, I think the most impressive result was from uh, Team Switzerland. With a Christian A who managed to uh, do uh, 2100 megahertz yeah. in a memory frequency validation. Yeah, so the results were not as, uh, in terms of memory, were not, uh, not as high as the ones we saw at Computex, but still, like, well, I mean, that, that result uh, was the closest one. It's fairly impressive yeah. to, um, to hit 2100 megahertz on the memory for a CPU and a motherboard and a memory kit that you've never mm. tested before. So yeah. there is no intense binning involved here for reaching that result. Yeah, talking about binning, like how many CPUs did each team got? Um, they got one for 690K and one for 790K engineering samples from Intel. Mm -hmm. And um, I think most of the teams just stick for, to the 4790K and use the other CPU as backup in case something happens. Well, yeah, because I, I do remember that... Um, when I was walking around at some point, I was asking the guys, and even an hour or like 30 minutes before the end, most of the teams had not tried their second CPU. So they sticked with the first one. Yeah, I think only, then, only, yeah, like two teams only tested the 4690K because it had a better IMC. Mm -hmm. uh, but in total, the 4790Ks were clocking fairly good. Yeah. I think we saw two times above 6.5 gigahertz validation. Yeah. And also pretty impressive 32M stuff, about 6.2 or 6.3 gigahertz. Which is, if you if you look at the average clocks from Haswell, which is very, very good. The average yeah. clock, I think, is about, on LN2, about around 6 gigahertz. So very, very good CPUs we had. Oh, it's strange so. that they that not all of the teams chose to uh, also test the second CPU, though. Know? Because in this kind of a competition where you have two CPUs, it's, and you had about five hours for the entire competition. Yes. So you could spend the first two hours figuring out which is the best CPU and then use the other three hours to run the benchmarks. Because... Once you have the system up and running, it's, it's CPU-Z uh, validation, it's XTU, SuperPi, and, and memory clock. Three of them are just CPU benchmarks where you can easily, okay, let's go back in the BIOS, enable yeah. the hyper-threading, and, and run the benchmark. And you can, you can easy, w once you know what the CPU can do, it's fairly easy to run all of those benchmarks within a three-hour time frame. Yeah, but still it's very complicated, especially with the single-sided MFR memory, because um, for, for XTU and 32M, the memory is limiting very, very hard. Mm. For example, for XTU, if you if you run everything on stock, you might end up with like 700 uh, oh, yes. points. Yeah. And if if you just set the memory right, it gives you a point uh, point boost of like 300 points. So it's not just about having the highest CPU clock; you also have Best to run the memory. Right. And for high memory clocks and efficient runs with MFR, you need to run it on cold. 
Yeah. Which no, is another issue. So everyone um, was running on LN2. Yeah, right? every team was running their memory on LN2, and it's not that easy if you have everything on on LN2 and it's frozen very, everywhere. Yeah, exactly. You have ice everywhere. That's um, why. That's why I would argue that test those CPUs before you actually try yeah. to do the do the results. Yeah, well, you can you can basically test them on like five gigahertz, thirty two M run. That's the, the best indicator for sure. And um, the the better scaling CPU you can just use on LN2. Mm. Yeah. So in terms of um, competition results, who won that competition? Uh, Hardware Looks won a competition, uh, okay. which was a, a team formed by uh, Dan Kopp and Igen Air. Igen yeah. Air is one person, just to, <laughs> just to clarify. So it was one team with two people. Okay, yeah. So, um, yeah, that event was a closed event. There was um, So no people were invited or allowed to come besides press and participants. Yeah. Um, is there plans for next year to have those events a bit more public so like um, like fans of those forums could actually come and support their team or something like well, that? Well, I would like to do that. I would really love to invite everybody um, who's interested in the topic, but we're, currently we are actually li um, limited by the space of the, of the venue. So hmm. I think if we... We'll have to switch to Yeah, if venue. we stick to six teams, it's going to be very hard to fit in a lot of visitors. And yeah. Yeah, maybe we can give out like five wild cards to visitors, but... In general, we cannot turn this to an open um, event until we, unless okay. we change the location. Yeah, yeah. yeah. and that yeah. probably depends on on partners uh, funding a bigger a bigger venues. Yeah, for sure. There, there's yeah. plenty of ven venues around that you can use. So let's hope that the partners next year just yeah. want to grow the event to to, to make it bigger. Yeah. yeah. Well, this year the the main difference with the previous events was the live streams was a little bit more successful as well. Like, mm -hmm. so well, it was not at least. Uh, all planned at the beginning of the event but we when we did the live stream we were like quite surprised that we ended up with like 1600 viewers plus so yeah it was pretty for, for an improvised live stream it was, yeah, it was yeah. very successful yeah it was improvised but it was still very well, <laughs> well structured <laughs> so yeah it was it was a pretty interesting so this this competition is finished there's no um there's going to be probably next one next year if there's one hopefully yeah yeah and uh, yes, yeah, so I will see. That's always nice to see, um, like uh, regions doing something, especially when overclockers actually put their efforts into organizing. So, well done, Roman. It was pretty good. Thanks. Um, so this leads us to the next topic, still in Germany, which is Gamescom. And uh, so here we had something planned with Case King. Yeah. So we we reached out to Case King because we know that at Gamescom they always have a massive booth. And we wanted to see how we can sort of um, promote overclocking to, our, to, to a crowd which primarily consists of gamers, like mm. young, actually a very young crowd of gamers. And uh, we reached out to them and they said, okay, you can, you can have a show on our booth explaining overclocking, um, which is exactly what we prepared for. So on Thursday at about 6 p.m. we went on stage, we, mm -hmm. built, um, we, we built a, a demo system on the on the. On one side, we had a completely stock system, and on the other side, we had the same components, but yeah. overclocked on dry ice cooling. And we just wanted to show the crowd, look, we can increase the FPS in our games from, I think it was 55 to yeah. 85 or something like that. Okay. So very impressive in increase in, in FPS. Uh, and then we just ran through what is overclocking, how it works with HWBot, um, which are the five different types of overclockers going from yeah. rookie to elite. And um, in the end, the crowd was most enthousi enthusiastic about the T-shirts we were giving <laughs> well, away. It's so. always like this, right? Those guys come mainly for the giveaways and the freebies. Yes, and, and that's something that maybe we hadn't prepared for that, that much uh, because we've never done this type of event before. But it was definitely, it was very interesting to mm. see how the crowd responds to overclocking. and Because I saw interested faces, but also confused faces <laughs> yeah. in the crowd. Yeah. They, they didn't really understand what was going on, but they seemed interesting enough. Yeah. I, I think after the show, someone actually came up to you as well. Yeah, there was one guy who was really interested in the topic. He came up to me asking um, about how to overclock his 290X and how he can participate in the HW World ranking. So I was, I was happy that at least one guy was very interested yeah. in it. Sure. Oh, well, this was one person who, after the show, had um, enough courage to come up to... Yeah, yeah there's always yeah. people interested, but they're like, oh, I'm not going to go ask yeah, questions. Yeah, exactly. Huh? So... Yeah. yeah, and so for that show, um, we had no LN2. So how how was the what was the plan then? Well, we just went over to dry ice. Um, like Peter always said, um, we had one system on air and one yeah. system on dry ice, which is not really easy to handle uh, live if you do the presentation and preparation um, plus everything. Yeah, plus, exactly. Yeah. If, especially because we had a very very short um, period of time for the yeah. show. 
Uh, but in general, I really liked it. And uh, it was amazing to do a, a show like that in front of a crowd, which is fairly different from, from overclocking. Yeah. Um, you could see, if I was to- when I was talking about the overclocking, um, it was very, very new to a lot of people. And when I mentioned that the system was running at like 5.4 gigahertz, you could see like... What is Whoa, he talking about? This is an amazing <laughs> frequency, yeah. I mean, yeah, how, yeah, it's hard for them, I guess, to uh, have a representation of, okay... So he went from four to four point five. Yeah. What does that mean? Like, what does? How hard is it to get? Even yeah. even though you were using dry ice, it, the dry ice was mainly for the show, right? At that yeah, point, of course, at that level. <laughs> I mean, the, the components were running pretty safe, obviously, because mm. if you're doing a presentation, you don't want uh, to risk something if you have only a thirty yeah. minutes show. Yeah, true. I mean, we just want to want to send out the message to the crowd what's possible, and there yeah. is actually a use of overclocking. You can get free performance increase by overclocking yeah get the best out of what yeah. you already have so gamescon it's it's massive right there's like i don't know how many thousands of people but like we see we, we literally saw queues of guys that had no ticket yeah. que- queuing <laughs> for six hours to get in for the last one hour and a half of the yeah. show on that yeah. day so i mean like this show is very popular and uh what do you think it's uh, is going to be the the next move for for overclockers in general? Like for that show, would, would it is it good to just have shows on the on the stage, or should we go into well, something? Well, we we more? walked around the entire uh, Gamescom uh, venue before doing the show just to check out what are the the opportunities here. Mm. What can we do? And I think um, to explain overclocking on a trade show uh, floor, it's it's difficult because people are there to be entertained and they don't want to be really informed about anything else. They don't really want to learn anything. They just want to be amazed by something. So if you use, for example, if you use liquid nitrogen for a show of maybe 15 to 20 minutes, sure. Like yeah. You're going to grab the attention of the people standing there and then just throw t-shirts. But or they might not giveaways. understand what's going on. They're not understanding and they're not there yeah. to learn. Um, but then on the second floor of uh, where we're doing the, the trade show, uh, the trade show um, thing with Case King, there was a, there was an area with uh, retro gaming. They had um, some case modding going on as well. So they live case da- modding, da- da- drifting. Right? Yes, yeah. they had a, they had skateboarding thing going on, and it was a very fairly big big venue. And a venue. Foot court. And, <laughs> yeah, <laughs> there was there was room enough to hold a oh yeah, yeah there was a lot of free there. space yeah. there, and right. I think that might be. For next year, what we should look into is can yeah. we reserve a spacer for overclockers? Yeah. yeah. Um, as long as we like, um, we we put some some yeah. uh, what well, we case like, in basically like, the overclockers to prevent the, the the regular crowd from touching the LN two. Yeah. That should be fine because the, the the case monitors had their very they had a protection thing yeah. for the Dremel, but they had all their their dangerous tools yeah. there as well, right? So should I think that that should be the the next step, and yeah. I think people are interested in overclocking. Yeah. But then at this kind of a venue, they would have more time to actually learn and see what, what overclocking well, is about. Yeah, you could run workshops on regular hours and people yeah. just add their name to the list and come over and how you get a actual hands-on to do the things themselves. Yeah, maybe wait, maybe you can even make like a public area with prepared systems, mm-hmm. maybe on, on water or air cooling for just users who are interested to really show them how overclocking works yeah. and let them try some stuff on, on, a, on a different system, not their own stuff. So... If they're afraid to break something, you can show them on the system. Hey, it's not going going to break if you overclock yeah. 200 megahertz. Okay, well, that's a big plan for next year. Yeah. And there's probably going to be a lot of planning involved, but that might be a very good occasion also to get the German community more involved because most of the Indeed, guys coming yeah. there are German speaking people, right? There's a few foreigner like fans of gaming. I saw a lot of people from France, but yeah, most of the guys are German. So Indeed, yeah. if we do that kind of thing, that's for sure it's gonna require like a German speaking. Um, so let's move to the next topic, which is the online competitions on HWBot. And I, we have to admit, like this, this last two months have been just overcrowded of, it's of been, competitions it's in every massive. corner of the world. Right? For some reason, everyone wants to hold an online overclocking competition, whether or not it's a standalone competition or a qualifier yeah. for a live event. It's just July and August being bombarded with plus with Team Cup plus. Oh, yeah. Yeah. Well, we extended we extended <laughs> yeah. the team cup one more month because yeah. there was too many uh, too much action going on in in July and August. Hmm. So yeah. So to put things back into context, context, but when you're gonna watch this video, uh, MSI qualifiers are probably going to be over, and we will have the list of who actually won. But like yesterday, were the actual finals of the EMEA qualifiers. So we followed the competition live. In the last thirty minutes, we're just. Impressive. It's it was like, uh, amazing to follow, yeah. <laughs> yeah. Like, um, 
So maybe we should like recap what, what MOA was about. Uh, you were judged last year. Um, yes. Can you quickly just tell us what, what MOA is? But most people already know. Well, oh, MOA is basically um, the, the, for, for us in the scene, one mm -hmm. of the most important uh, live overclocking events hosted by MSI. And um, last year we had basically two days, one, one day of classic competition where yeah. they um, got a, s a setup from MSI and um, they had to do several benchmarks to compete in the ranking. And on the seventh day, it was kind of like a free overclocking competition. Yeah. Um, we set um, some benchmarks they could do with their own hardware. And whenever they break a record, uh, yeah, they get some prizes for it. So. Okay. Yeah. yeah. So this year's structure of the MOA is very similar to the one of last year. Yeah. So last year, um, we had uh, a, a, also a class A and a class B uh, mm. division. Yeah. So class A is basically with the most high-end hardware, Core i7s, uh, the, the Ivy Bridge. No, sorry, just Haswell Z97 and then the yeah. 290X yeah. Uh, Lightning cards. So this is the really expensive quality. Yeah, and class part. B is then the more affordable one with the, the Pentium Anniversary Edition and uh, GTX 750. 750. Yeah. And, and motherboard, you can use Z90. Uh, 87 as well. Z87 right? and Z97, yeah. yeah. So that that's the same thing we had last year. Uh, what's different from last year is that the Class A is just one qualifier, no longer a pre-qualifier and then an actual qualifying event to mm. make things more simple. Um, yeah. And the Class B basically remained the same thing. And we okay. see that the Class B is actually the most uh, the most active one with, I think, 24 participants. Yeah. And um, then the, the, the Class A sees participation between 7 and I think 17 in the EMEA yeah. qualifiers, which is fairly low, but considering how much it actually costs to compete in those A classes, it's it's still yeah. impressive. Yeah. Like, for example, to qualify in Class A, how much are the costs in terms of... Is if you're an overclocker, well, but if you buy all your parts plus I need to how I mean, if if you're really lucky and uh, you just buy one board, one CPU, one GPU, and you think it's gonna be the best, you probably end up with like one thousand euro just for the hardware, and then yeah. you probably have to add another five hundred to one thousand euro for the LN2 mm. if you really push it. If you it. already have your parts, but it, that yeah, of course, <laughs> if you already have all the gear. Yeah. Um, but the biggest issue is, I think, to bin the right CPU and the GPU. You can spend almost unlimited money on that. Yeah. Um, usually, if you if you want to go for a six point six Haswell CPU pre bind, probably going to cost like eight hundred to one thousand euro. Yeah. If you, if in, you in buy it in the market, yeah. in particular in the EMEA qualifier, we see that the the level of competition is really really high. So yeah. in the, in the yeah. EMEA qualifier, just buying the components is not going to cut it. You maybe make it top eight. If, yeah. you're, if you're actually lucky with the hardware, yeah. but if you want to be part of the top six that proceeds to the to the grand final, you need to have really well binned hardware. You need to have a six point five Haswell and a, a two ninety X Lightning that can do sixteen hundred, yeah. sixteen fifty on the core, and yeah. then so it's, a, it's quite an investment, right? It is quite an investment, yeah, to 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 proceed to the yeah. to the grand final. In the in the Americas, it's slightly different. Um, because I, I don't know why, but the, the it went completely different this year from EMEA in America, where like there was eight people competing in America or seven. And the scores are are lower as well, though. Like yeah. The the yeah the, the the resulting scores. I think someone posted on the forums that if you combine all the top scores from the Americas qualifier, yeah. you wouldn't make top ten in the EMEA final. Oh really? Which yeah. is amazing, right? That so there's more competitiveness yeah. in the European market. Oh, well, like, um, yeah, you have the well EMEA is including Middle East yeah. and uh, Africa and, yeah. and Africa, of course. But yeah, the primarily the European overclockers are very strong this year and very competitive. Yeah, just 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 look at the lineup of the of the participants in the EMEA qualifier. If, I mean, if you have already Extreme Addict and VV, that those are like two guys. Yeah. If, if they if they do their overclocking, you know, it's some serious business. Yes. Yeah. So yeah. there was an APAC, but that's because he's judged. So yeah, if not, he yeah. would be there for sure. Yeah, of course. Um, and the other guys. Really, really impressive scores. Yeah. It's well, if you look at Zizolia, um, he but Zizolia uh, yeah. went to MOA last year yeah. through the Class B, and this year it's a rule that if you if you participated in MOA last year, you have to use class you have a. to use Class A. You can no, no longer participate in Class B, and he broke the Unigen Heaven record twice, <laughs> <laughs> which yeah. is I mean okay, that's that's someone who comes yeah. from Class B through MOA Class A now, and he just destroys the the Unigen Heaven record. Amazing. Uh, so yeah. th those guys are serious contenders for yeah. the actual oh yeah, finals. a very excellent excellent overclockers yeah so um so right now we're still waiting for the class b to to finish yeah and for the apac uh 
final to uh, yeah, qualify to, to finish, finish as well. well. Yeah. Oh, those both finish on the same date, so end of August. August thirty yeah. first. Yeah, yes. So probably by the time you see that, you have the list of who won. And today, by the Road to MOA show, um, MSI announced the dates for the finals. So that's going to be eighteen and nineteen of October. Yeah. In Taipei. So I guess most people are probably really happy about that. Yeah. Because yeah, everyone is waiting to go to Taipei, right? Well, that's the place to be, right? So yeah. Taipei yeah. is an amazing city to be in. This is also what defines uh, the actual people, like that the why the reason why they want to compete in a way is to get also that trip to Taipei because it's worth more than just the ticket to go there. Like, well, if, if you're from from Europe, um, Taipei is pretty far away, and usually, um, if, if you just go on holidays, you mm. probably don't look at Taipei as as a go because only the, the flight is very expensive. So. Um, I think for all the work and especially the time you put in the result, I think it's a very good, yeah. a very good thing to to get a trip to Taipei. It's yeah, and when you're there, you have the chance to visit the MSI HQ and talk with more like engineers or whoever worked on the board. So yeah, so it's you, you sort of get a, a view behind the scenes of how it, what what it takes to actually develop a, a product, mm. which is which is interesting for for a lot of people. Yeah. Okay, so that's for MOA this year. I guess um, the next OC show we could probably going to be... Um, actually, we, we could probably shoot it exactly at the same time the, the finals are going to happen, depending on the editorial schedule of the Overclocker. Um, that was not the only competition. There also was the HyperX competition. So the HyperX, we had that event at Computex, which was a, a launch event for the series that is going through 2014 up to 2015 with the finals in Vegas. Yeah. So how is the competition structure for that? So uh, it's slightly different from the MOA uh, competition where the MOA qualifiers was in just in two months, the summer months, July and August. Yeah. Um, HyperX decided to have um, a one month competition for every region for the next four months. So they started in June, mm-hmm. um, July, August, September, and then the final is in in Vegas in uh, big, the early of uh, early January. Yeah. And um, so we already had the Latin American qualifier finish, and yeah. uh, right now we're in uh, the, uh, the the Far East qualifier. Yeah. So for Latin America, we have um, Clayton Schenkel to proceed to the grand final in yeah. Vegas as well as Nacho Arroyo so that's someone from Brazil and someone from Argentina so South yeah. America there's no one from North uh, well they would be competing in the North American oh, okay. yeah. qualifier <laughs> yeah yeah <probably>. it's <laughs> true it's separate America <laughs> <laughs> yeah 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 so um, that that final is going to happen at uh, CES yeah it would be probably a very similar setup than last year so a big hotel room probably a hotel venue kind of place was um, last year I remember yeah. they had those seats that were looking a lot like the gamer seats we see usually on gaming events last year they had a final with only five participants five, yeah. and this this year is going to be I think 16 participants yeah so last year was a trial and this year is the real the actual real yeah. deal right there's also an increased price money the, the total cash price purse is 15,000 yeah. US dollars instead of 10,000 yeah. US dollars so do we know already about the, the rules for how it's going to be in terms of hardware like for the final? Yeah. Is it a bring your own motherboard no, thing? No, no, no. no. The, the hardware yeah. will be provided just okay. like last year. The yeah. the only time the HyperX uh, OC takeover was... Um, oh, no, they have never done with their own hardware. Well, Computex, you could oh, bring yes. your own, though. Yeah. Right? For one one part of the competition, you could yeah. bring your own hardware. For the other part, you had to use the Pentium anniversary. This mm-hmm. one. Yeah. Okay. But this is a real competition, just like the MOA Classic Battle, where yeah. you br- uh, the, 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 the organizer provides you the hardware and on the spot... You have to figure out what is the highest clocks, what what is the the maximum performance you can actually extract from these components. Yeah, and for the finals, the cash price is going to be the same as Computex, right? Ten k, fifteen thousand, fifteen k, fifteen k. Yeah. So even it's higher, right? increased. Yeah. So it's pretty. It's it starts to become more interesting for people to invest a lot into the hardware when you start to talk about that kind of. I think it's, it's all, apart from that, it's also the trip to Vegas. It's, it's kind yeah. of the same thing like like for MOA, the trip to Taipei. Vegas is also a very interesting city to, to Yeah, for to go some to. people, it might be just a dream come true. Like, well, yeah. so yes, I can go around all the booths, all the yeah. hotels, and all the, exactly, the yeah. craziness of that city, right? All right. Vegas is definitely a, spe- <laughs> a special city, too. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> We're not going to make any references about here, whatever <laughs> previous actions or things that happened. What stays, happens in Vegas stays in Vegas, right? Besides the competition. Yes. <laughs> yeah. You will see the results online. <laughs> Don't worry. Yeah. All right. Uh, and this brings us to another competition, which is uh, also happening every year. Now it's probably the third or fourth edition, and it's called the, the AOC. Third. 
third edition, edition started right? in 2012, just yeah. in Russia and then the the, the states, the, the the countries yeah. around Russia. And then last year they expanded to the entire Europe. Yeah. And it's this this year is the same thing. It's the entire Europe plus Russia plus the yeah. countries around there. So to explain things, AOC is the Aces Open Overclocking Championship. Cup. 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 Okay. Yeah, cup. Yeah. I'm getting confused. <laughs> championship, cup. In the end, it's a C, yeah. right? <laughs> and everyone competes. <laughs> but so that competition is uh, only for Europe this year again. So it's not a it's not a worldwide series of competition, but it is organized by the Aces uh, Russia division. And uh, leading that project is Lance, which is an overclocker working for Aces. Um, so maybe uh, Roman, uh, maybe you, you were there last year. Yeah, you were. I was participating. Yeah, yeah. I happily made it to the to the last place of the <laughs> qualifications, uh, qualification last yep. year. I was really happy to participate. But you were there, right? Yeah, so well, that's yeah, what matters. <laughs> that's the Olympic spirit, right? Yeah. Participation is more important than winning. And how was your performance in the finals? Well, I made it fourth. Mm -hmm. Was was okay. Um, I won all the the three D stages, but I kind of um, yeah fucked up in the thirty two M run. <laughs> <laughs> because um, there was um, a fixed clock competition with 5.5 oh, yeah, right. years yes. and my CPU was so good so I could only run 5.4 <laughs> <laughs> yeah. so yeah but the Russian team uh, I remember uh, Smoke also had an issue like that Some one of their score where yeah. it was like 5 megahertz too high yeah and something like that yeah, yeah no, not but all in, all in all a very 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 awesome competition it was uh, the kind of gamer trade show similar to Gamescom yeah. I think um, the venue was very impressive. There were a lot of people walking around, which made it also quite difficult during yeah. the overclocking. And yeah, I have to say thanks to Slams for that kind of organization. Very well done. Mm -hmm. And I guess it's going to be the same this year in terms of like quality of the competition. But yeah. I heard that the venue will be... Um, more private, right? Yeah, more private. Yeah. Well, it's probably also, I think, the, the cost, right? If we, we have to look at the cost, hosting something in a gaming event is always more expensive. Yeah. Because the price per square meter just is just skyrocketing. Yeah. Um, so this year qualification process for AOC, how is that? Like? Fairly similar to last year, you um, you have to compete online on HWBot, mm -hmm. and the top uh, the top fourteen of the competition are allowed to um, are allowed to participate in the final. But the the difference is that the first seven will be able to or will be allowed to pick a teammate of the okay. the second seven. At the second half of seven overclockers. <laughs> so, so the teams are not random, but it, it gives a it will give a little extra. It's, it's the teams are not random, and you, but you cannot take anyone with you uh, to the. So you have to pick any one of the people who qualified in that competition yeah. as, as well. And then there is two tickets for um, the people who only compete with the Pentium Anniversary Edition. So they will form one team at the okay. competition as well. So, and the, but the competition then in the end is not going to be using the Pendulum. Uh, no, I, th I think it's going to be the 4790K. Yeah. yeah. Or maybe even X99, who knows? Yeah. Okay. So, in terms of location, this year again, it's going to be uh, Moscow. Uh, the dates have been announced. It, they are actually on the, on the event. Uh, First and second of November. Yeah. yeah. So, that's two weeks after the, the MOA finals. Yes. <laughs> so, it's going to be a pretty busy end of the year and we heard also the AOCT the sort of competition by the Indonesian guys is going to take place around that same time yeah. probably on the same weekend so um, yeah it's going to be a, a road trip months again yeah. <laughs> <laughs> all right and uh, this is not finished because events just keep popping up and there's always something else um, last year at Computex uh, HWBot hosted the um, OC gathering which was a meeting for overclockers uh, where people could come and freestyle bench for three days pretty much no limitations no regulations as much L2 as you want um, so I heard well I know <laughs> HW <laughs> but is working on something else something uh, something else at a different place yes so um, we want we saw that the event was quite a success like yeah. everyone was really happy to do this event and it didn't really uh, cost us that much effort to put it all together. It was in Taipei, so we had all the, the right connections and we knew where to get the venue, where to get the LN2. Yeah. Um, but, you know, we want to we want to do these events around the world. We want not just to do it in Taipei, but, you know, in Europe or in North America or mm -hmm. even whatever. Uh, I mean, South America maybe as well. Yeah. Um, so in, uh, in February, we're planning to do something in North America. We cannot say too much about it yet because not everything's confirmed. 
but um, yeah, North North uh, North America, and um, it will be kind of the same setup. We just yeah. get as much LN2 as possible yeah. and freestyle benching and just have fun for the weekend. Is there a plan to have competitions there as well, or that's still it's still in the works? Yeah, we're not entirely sure yet. Uh, depends on how much room we'll have at the mm-hmm. at the at the event. Um, but even at the anniversary edition, we were already planning to do some sort of a competition. Yeah, true. Um, so but maybe if we yeah. if we if we're able to plan this ahead, it would be kind of a good <laughs> kind of a good yeah, um, yeah, yeah. spot to try out new even true, competition yeah. structures as well. Yeah, um, yeah, because that kind of event, because people do not expect necessarily huge, massive prices and the usual kind of competition mm-hmm. scheme. It's easy to just make it different. Uh, considering the size of the community in Germany, um, the DIY community and things like that, would it be also a consideration of something to do something in either Europe and or Germany? Of course, of course. Um, within the last four or five years, I usually hosted the uh, EOS. It's like a private overclocking session. You can, it's, it's a private session, but you can f- just particip- participate if you want to. I just posted on all German forums that if mm-hmm. you want to participate, just shoot me at PM. And um, we had free space for usually about 20 overclockers. Yeah. And um, we were just benching for free the whole weekend. LN2, having barbecue and all that stuff. And I think that was the one of the coolest events I, yeah. I attended. Yeah, I attended uh, last year something very similar in Australia as well. So the guys had went to like a similar place, about yeah, 15 to 20 people. Yeah, barbecue and have some drinks, have fun and just overclock, exchange information. Yeah. And uh, even Gigabyte had run a very small competition there for the the new guys. So it was actually pretty cool because you had a new guy and then some elderly, like some more experienced overclockers just helping out and giving the tricks. You know, <laughs> but yeah. Elderly. <laughs> elderly. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah the, the, the word is not correct. <laughs> Sorry. <laughs> but yeah, I mean, like the, the idea is to try something else, something else, something new, right? Well, I think the, yeah, the, the time is right to sort of for the community to, to start doing their own events larger and larger and larger. Yeah, yeah. Because there was a lot of positive vibe in, in the community of like we want to tell other people how it works, and we see from, for example, from the from the XTU that there's a lot of people that are actually interested in overclocking, but probably they don't they don't know exactly how to get started, and they need some guidance, and they need some some yeah. people to explain. Okay, this is how it works, and they, they want to have the the social fabric of a team, and yeah, yeah. I think a lot of overclockers now want to. Okay, let's let's make this kind of events, let's make these gatherings, and then see. Who wants to like yeah. especially a yeah. team and especially if you want to get into it and too right unless you want to read pages and pages of how to do it it's always better to just yeah. have someone like, showing you the, the, pro- the problem is even if you read like pages yeah. you might just make mistakes as yeah well, it's just well. different if, if you never tried it yourself you you just need somebody to teach you yeah it's the same like how I started no name from above for big showed it to me in like 2007 yeah. this is how you cut your insulation yeah. this is how you place I, I was things. I was really afraid of yeah well Ellen 2 is really cold this is not dangerous I think everybody of yeah. us started like that it's but when when once you get in touch with the stuff it's actually pretty easy to handle yeah. and very easy to overclock in general so wow. you just you just need somebody to teach you how it works and I think those live events are the best opportunity to do that. And I think we need we need to host like big, big public events yep. with maybe twenty to fifty overclockers, and then just invite everybody who's interested and just show them how it works. Yeah, even maybe, if they, yeah, yeah, just air guys and uh, yeah, for sure. Cooling. I mean, once you got the basics of overclocking and you you, you felt the. Uh, um, what, what we like the competition itself mm. um, constantly like pushing yourself forward it, what, because when you're when, when you're overclocking a system you get a certain benchmark result yeah. and then you go check online and then you see well you know if I if I push a little harder and score 200 points more exactly. I'm, I'm yeah. moving up two or three rankings yeah so yeah. it's that kind of a competitive spirit if you have that in exactly. your blood then yeah. you, you have the pride the of achieving it it's like yeah. wow yeah I worked so hard and yeah. and you don't you don't need LN2 to, to, to start feeling that oh yeah for sure yeah yeah. I mean, I also started on air and water cooling, and I most people start the ranking. cooling the water cooling. Uh, yeah, <laughs> exactly. And, and then you're like, you're like trying. Okay, I, w- I want to move up in the rankings. What, what is, what is, yeah. what, what can I do? Cascade. So, yeah, exactly. Then you start tweaking, and then you, you hit the limits of tweaking. So you you you're in the hardware limit, and you think, okay, how can I push the CPU higher? Yeah. I'm already on the voltage limit, so maybe I have to go colder. And then you try water cooling, and then maybe you move to a cascade or to dry ice. And I think that's all. That's the way the process how all the overclockers started. Yeah, uh, so that's a big plan for next year. Well, not there yet, but we're getting there. Um, what is coming in the next few weeks? And by the time you see that videos, you're probably going to be able to read reviews as well on the on the overclocker. But it's X ninety nine. 
X99, yes. It's no longer under NDA, or maybe it is. I'm well, not sure. We can say it by anymore. the time it comes out, it's fine. <laughs> <laughs> well, at the time of recording, everyone's talking about X99. Yeah, well, by the time of recording, there's already pictures out there of every single X99 board. Because even yesterday, we were seeing not uh, all of them, though, some but, EVGA yeah. boards already out there we hadn't seen yet. So, so we, have, um, we have Gigabyte, who's shown the G1 gaming Wi-Fi board, and the, so, the, and the, 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 the SOC, SOC, yeah. SOC as well. Yeah. Rock has shown uh, OC Formula. They've shown Extreme 4 and 6, yep. as well as the Killer motherboard. Yeah. And Gigabyte. then MSI has shown yeah. the X Power and the Gaming 9 motherboard. They showed yeah. it already actually at Computex. So, uh, so right now, we're just missing the Asus board. Yeah, Asus is the one, the one company like doesn't show anything up front, which is... Yeah. Well, probably they just go by the dates this time. <laughs> Who knows? So what to expect from X99? Well, X99, uh, in general, I think we're going to see a lot of nice results with the new Haswell E CPUs. Um, we're going to see 8-core unlocked CPUs, uh, from what I heard, rumors. Mm -hmm. um, I think the average clock on LLM2 will be something between 5.6 to 5.8 gigahertz. Um, which is pretty cool for, for multi-GPU. Um, yeah. For example, for DMARC 11 or uh, for DMARC Firestrike, you need a, a very high um, amount of cores to compensate the, the GPUs. On the other hand, there might be some um, issue compared to IVE because you're running a lower CPU clock which might limit the GPU performance in some GPU tests. I think that the easiest, the, the easiest analogy to make is the transition from Gulftown to Sandy Bridge E, where you actually had more efficiency clock per clock and um, uh, the, like the memory performance was better in general, but because Colftown could clock so much higher, yeah, yeah, in the, the end, Sandy Bridge E yeah. results were on par with or only slightly higher or slightly lower than the Golftown results. So with a really, really great Golftown, you were still very competitive mm -hmm. even when Sandy Bridge E was launched. Yeah. So we're gonna see the, the the top Haswell E scores, the really high clocked ones. They will be what is out there right now. Of course. But probably the average retail ones will be. It will be a hit and miss if you want to break your really yeah. good Ivy Bridge. So it might just be also expensive bidding. <laughs> indeed. It's like well, we, we're back yeah. at the $1,000 CPUs, yeah. right? So, so the bidding is indeed going to be expensive. Uh, yeah. And what is new with X99 is also DDR4. Yes. So here in terms of memory, what is that going to, to well, impact? DDR4 is going to be very interesting. We will see a lot of very high frequencies, but you have to keep in mind that the timings are going up as well. Mm -hmm. um, I think one problem will be that currently there is a lot of uh, single-sided MFR out there, so you're kind of losing performance on that. It will be very hard in the beginning to, to find the right memory sticks. Yeah. Um, but I think it's it's the same like the DDR3 or DDR2. In the, in the beginning, it's just very hard to find the right sticks, but over the time, people will try to figure out which is the right kit, and vendors will provide the right kits as well. So There will be more kits out there, because yeah, right just, now it's just pretty It's just a matter of time, like always. Yeah. yeah. Okay, well, that's going to be quite interesting in the next weeks, right? Um, so I think that's pretty much it for this OC show, unless you guys have something you want to add. Not in particular, no. Okay. Looking forward to X99. Yeah, <laughs> yeah so well, thanks, uh, thanks guys for watching. If you like the video, don't forget to subscribe and give us a thumbs up. Uh, make sure to read all the pages of The Overclocker. We love that magazine. And uh, yeah, see you next time. See ya. See ya.